So let's talk about one of Toyota's most famous engines, its evolution, and some of its interesting attributes, the 4A G. It started life in 1983 and was produced until 1998. Let's break down its naming convention. The 4 means the fourth revision of the A block. The G indicates it's a performance cylinder head and the E is for electronic fuel injection. The first instances of the 4A engine family were far less impressive and performance oriented than the almighty 4A GE. The first engine, being the 4AC, used a carbureted single overhead cam 8 valve platform outputting around 70 horsepower. The next evolution of the 4A family was the 4A FE, which introduced double overhead cams and fuel injection. Soon after, the 4A GE was the performance option for the Corolla, Celica, MR2, and other mid-sized Toyota vehicles of the time. Fun fact, you can also find the 4A GE in the Geo Prism and Chevrolet Nova, which are basically rebadged versions of the Corolla AE92. When it comes to the power output of the 4A GE, it started with 112 horsepower in its first iteration and bumped up to 165 horsepower in its final generation. Another fun fact, the 4A GE shares a lot with the Cosworth BDA. For those that don't know, the BDA means Belt Drive Series A, and it was one of the first racing and production engines to have both cam gears driven by a rubber tooth belt. The 4A GE was also Toyota's first engine to have both cam gears driven by a rubber tooth belt. Without drifting too far off, the BDA was a racing engine designed in 1969 by Mike Hall for the Ford Escort RS1600. The original BDA spawned numerous variants which were very successful in various classes of motorsport. Are these all coincidences between Toyota and Cosworth? I don't think so because the similarities don't end there. Another interesting overlap is that the 4A GE has a bore of 81 millimeters and a stroke of 77 millimeters. The BDA also has an identical bore and stroke. Moreover, the 4A GE uses an oversquare design, which means its bore is larger than its stroke, allowing it to handle high RPMs significantly well. A large bore allows for larger valves, and in stock form, the 16 valve 4A GE comes with 29.5 millimeter intake and 25.5 millimeter exhaust valves. These are also identical in size to the Cosworth BDA. These attributes mean both engines are capable of handling high RPMs. So it seems the 4A GE is basically a mass produced version of the Cosworth BDA. What about tuning? Well, the 4A GE has been around for more than 30 years, so everything possible that you can imagine being done to it has already been done. Some examples include high revving Formula Atlantic builds that produced around 240 horsepower at around 9,000 to 10,000 RPMs, adding turbos, twin charging, and even carburetor conversions. I'm sure there are more crazy builds that I didn't even mention. The 4A GE's block is made from cast iron, making it heavier than aluminum blocks, but this also means it's tough to handle abuse and even boost. It also has a forged steel crankshaft, making it a perfect candidate for forced induction. But depending on how much boost you make, upgrading the piston and connecting rods is not a bad idea since they are cast. Additionally, the 4A GE is a non-interference engine, which simply means when the piston has a top dead center, it will never go higher than a fully open valve. That is to say, the piston can never interfere with the valves. Conversely, in an interference engine, the piston could occupy the same space as an open valve. This means if you rotate the engine backwards in an interference engine, you could potentially damage the valves or the piston due to collision. The 4A GE engine has a total of five generations, but that is honestly very unreliable and you really can't tell what's inside unless you take them apart. In conclusion, the 4A GE is a good, small, reliable, capable engine. It's short and it's a great swap into older Toyotas and other light cars. It is outdated and squeezing very large power figures from the 4A GE will take a lot more effort and money than getting the same power figures from a more modern iconic engine such as the 2ZZ or Honda K-Series for example. 
That being said, it's a novice-friendly engine that is still relatively plentiful and is fun and easy to tune and work with.